Welcome everyone to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. We have, I was thinking about the word to describe how huge this show is. And it reminded me of Kill Bill 2. When what's her name from Splash, which started with Tom Hanks? Carol Hannah. Gargantuan. This is a gargantuan show. A lot of news, a whole bunch of news. A lot of important news. Uh, the day that we've been sort of uh, waiting for uh, with the Disney Investor Day. We got a lot of stuff that came out of there. We're going to focus mostly on the Marvel stuff, uh, the Star Wars um, stuff, as well as the business of it, right? What does this mean? What are all these numbers, right? Um, but first, we got to talk about Warner Media. Last week, I was praising them because I thought, and I still do, think that they made the right decision for them. But then a few days later, you start hearing about all the people that are upset. Because it just didn't stop with one or two executives or anything. This went to directors, actors, DGA. Everybody's going crazy over this. And I'm saying, I'm saying mad crazy. So what is it? I'm going to ask you, Brian. What is it that's making these guys upset and threatening legal action and so and 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 uh um what do you call that i i said the word before boycott boycotting which is not a a a, a not serious word that you throw around boycotting is a serious word the th so you hear threatening of boycotting uh warner media what has caused this uproar I think there's two themes that I sense in this. Number one is, I think we're both surprised that Warner Media does not seem to have really consulted with all of the parties involved and really established a new way of doing business with those parties yes. before they made the announcement. They went with the announcement. The report suggested some of the people involved were not informed until maybe an hour to an hour and a half. That's crazy. Before the news hit, which given the magnitude of the change is pretty shocking. Yeah. And so I think a lot of the fallout you're getting has to do with that. That you're talking about powerful people. Christopher Nolan, Denny Villeneuve, James Gunn, even Patty Jenkins, who actually obviously was at the forefront of this, reacting in a way that suggests they were not in the room and not part of the dialogue to make this happen. The second theme that I would point to has to do as everything does with money. Yeah. The, the way pictures are produced and sent to the big screen, a lot of the talent is compensated on the back end based on how a movie does yes and so i think there's a very widespread concern over how everyone involved with these motion pictures is going to be paid yeah. for the work they already did i think this is less of an issue for future films that haven't started yet i think it's more about these 18 films that have that already been done, done. Yes. And then you hear word come out that Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot were each given north of $10 million as part of Wonder Woman 84 going to HBO Max. So to me, a lot of this traces back to, well, hang on a minute, they got what? Well, what are we getting? Exactly. And how are we getting paid? So I think to not have that tied up or at least seemingly have a framework for how to deal with that i'm surprised i'm surprised the studio didn't have that kind of already in hand by the time they put this out to the world i still think 
although because of all this that's being said and how things went down certainly looks like a a move that was done out of desperation at first i praised them i said yo i think they're doing the right thing i think they're making smart decisions but when i found out this it's like how do you not involve the people that help you create all of this how how, how do you not tell them and to you might as well not have even told me to tell me an hour before and listen i'm telling you all before because this is happening whether you like it or not pretty much and i can listen guys like christopher nolan patty jenkins and, and others when you work on something like this, your whole dream is to have people sit in the theater and, and watch your movie. You, if you're a director, you dream about that. You want that to be the case. But also, is it, it involves money. You know? A lot of it is because of the money as well. They Have they worked out any sort of deal that sort of compensates them after the fact, after they start streaming, what, what, is there a deal in place or, or will they offer them a deal? Most likely they will if they haven't, but w w where where does that stand? Well, I, look, the studio clearly knew they were gonna have to pay something. I mean, and they're, they're not gonna do this knowing that it's gonna be free. Um, I think that, that as messy as this has gotten, and then the, the, the kind of the benchmark of Wonder Woman 84, it really will give some of these top filmmakers and talent the number to kind of gear their negotiation. So, okay, if that's worth 10, then I should be getting 5, 15, 12. So what it means to the studio is very simple. It just increases the break-even point for the number of subscribers you need to make this happen, because they're going to have to write checks, right? If you don't, because here's the thing you can't have happen, and I, if we're looking at what's the worst case for Warner Brothers out of all this, yeah. is when you look at the strength and the language in particular that Nolan used and that Denny Villeneuve used. Denny Villeneuve basically said, Doom Part Two may not happen because he doesn't want it. That's the issue is you don't want to lose the IP yeah. from filmmakers as talented. I mean, Christopher Nolan and Warner Brothers partnership is 20 years old now. That has produced hit after hit after hit. They, yeah. To have him go to another yeah. studio which is basically what he's threatening is is something they can't afford so they're much better off writing big checks now to keep those guys in the house and they probably will so one of the things from money perspective is the license fee so this came up in the context i believe of I forget which of the films was on the list it might have been dune actually that netflix was bidding 250 million or 300 million dollars to buy one of these films who, who stopped it well warner media stopped it because okay. they they claimed that they had the rights to it and so one of the concerns is that when you have warner media and hbo max both being they're on both sides of the table but they're part of the same company that you're not going to have a license fee that values these films appropriately so how do you again how do you get people paid off that so I think that's the other piece of this that has to get sorted out. And all, like I said, it all comes back to Warner Brothers has the budget of film here and then come up with a number that makes everyone happy on top of that. And then they'll know how many subscribers they need to kind of break even on that. So it can be sorted out, but I am surprised at how much of it was not sorted out before this went public. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. Warner Media, Warner Media has a lot to uh, flesh out before people are happy. The only ones that I think are winning here, I think Warner Media is winning as well, um, is the the fans, right? They we're gonna see this content possibly because you never know they might renege on this this promise. If especially. If vaccines have uh, a, an effect good enough for people to start to come back, even though probably it's not going to be uh, huge opening weekends as we used to, at least I don't think in the beginning, right? 
Um, so, but fans are ultimately winning. Warner Media is staying afloat, so they 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 said we got to do this, or else because these guys are killing us, especially after listening to what we saw on Disney Investor Day, right? Um, Spider Man. These announcements don't surprise me. The only one you can sort of picture sitting and waiting is Paul Giamatti. But if that happens, it's like, I don't want to hear no more news about this. <laughs> you know, it's like, we know this is happening, man. We know this is happening. Has, is Toby the only one that hasn't signed up yet, right? Yeah, the rumor is he wants more money. He's playing poker. He's still playing poker. <laughs> He's still playing poker because he realizes, he realizes what this can do. He wants his piece. And he knows, yeah, and he knows he's not, um, what are you going to do, replace me? It's not going to work. So it, it did get me thinking that if this was just a one day, one scene, haha moment in the multiverse, I don't think he's holding out. The fact that he's holding out, I think is a hint that, and I think the number of people they're bringing back in the original mm -hmm. film, we're not just talking about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire anymore. So Alfred Molina's back, Kirsten Dunst is back, Tom Stone is back. The fact that all of these characters are back makes me think that the storyline will actually involve them. Maybe not as leads, but in a more meaningful way, maybe even for more than one picture. Which I agree with that. I think is, you know, we don't know how much is going to be crammed into the one movie, but the fact they're being so detailed about this, I think suggests that they have a plan to really use these characters for more yeah. than just, you know, 30 seconds. Damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. My concern, but my concern, my concern is, I mean, hopefully I think they're, is this is going to be delivered to us over time. That is the hope. I don't know if you can pull off an, into the, a one movie into the Spider-Verse with, with this. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like what story are you going to say? Are you going to, are you going to tell the same story? You're going to probably tell a different story. I don't know how they're going to do this. Are they going to go the route of bringing this to live action? That'll be crazy. We don't know yet. Um, so let's see, let's see. But again, these announcements uh, don't surprise any any one of us. Uh, certainly, will again. The hope is that this is not a one-time deal. Because if it is, then I'm nervous. Is this is if this is a three-part film, I'm in. I'm in. Disney. Investors Day. The day that we were all waiting for. The one that you had circled on your calendar in red. We were, that's what we were waiting. The one that you set up alerts for. This is the day that we were waiting for. And they made us wait for There were people like, oh, I'm not going to wait four hours. Yeah, you waited four hours. <laughs> you had to wait four hours, at least three hours and a half, right? To get to the Marvel stuff, because they, they, you know, this was a presentation. If they're gonna do a presentation, they're gonna do it the best way. They're gonna leave the best for last. Although the best for last was, I was not too impressed with. So, first, let's talk about the business. So the last time we spoke in, in a couple of our episodes, a couple of episodes ago, we said Disney was at 73 million. The, the number today, or as of December 2nd, is 86. 86.8. 80, 86 million, and probably by now, 87, right? We did the math last time, you do it. How much is it, $7? Uh, a month, you do the math. Okay. 
then they have their projections for 2024 300 to 500 million subscribers by then that number i think includes hulu and espn as well as across the different services okay and throughout the presentation they sort of talked about how they were going to be able to do this Expanding globally, offering other channels to in different uh, places. Is Stars, the the channel Stars on Disney Plus, is it still available to us in the U.S.? No, I think Star is an international app in okay. certain regions. It, there's different names for Disney Plus effectively overseas now. So there'll be, but it 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 just is the same service or the same version of the service for that country. But I think Latin America, Europe, some of the different places have different, different gotcha, 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 gotcha. titles. Yeah. With all they announced, Brian, and, and try to, I, and I, I can't remember now, but there were some key things that were said. I kept hearing the word flexibility and, and, and being nimble. That meant something because he said it several times, Bob Chapin. Talk to us a little bit about um, how they're going to be releasing their content. And is it possible that they can, You do you think they can reach 300 to 500 million, if not over or under that? Well, to put it in perspective, their original business plan, which was 12 months ago, said we want to be between 60 and 90 million subscribers by 2024. So you just heard Pablo say 86.8 in one year. <laughs> so that was the five year plan. They did it in one year. Wow. Now the 2024 number, which was 60 to 90 is now north of 300. I mean, who am I to say no? I mean, with the global reach of their franchises and their IP, the amount of the, the way that the service is going to change, I mean, we'll get into it, but basically this, for the last 12 months, 87 million people have signed up for the legacy catalog of Disney plus the Mandalorian and Hamilton. Well, give it, I mean, there's been other little new stuff, but in terms of big new stuff, that's it. Yeah. I mean, they announced over a hundred new show. Yeah. So, if you sign up going forward, you're signing up for all the historical stuff plus all the original stuff. And I mean, I think any, I think sky is the limit. I mean, that's why I have the background I do. Brave new world. We're, we're headed out into another galaxy. <laughs> I think the, the thing I'll just point out from the numbers perspective is we talked about, you know, the activist investor wanting them to save three billion on a dividend. If you look at the rough estimates of what they're spending, it's way above that. Yeah. So you're basically looking at them spending on content north of $15 billion a year. And I think, you know, eight to 10 billion of that is going to the streaming service. That's, and that's oh, by the way, the so the stock, which was at an all time high before the investor day, was up 15% today, yeah. the day after. Seems like the market like hearing numbers like that yeah, yeah. and like the approach they're taking. Yeah. So it's only going to reinforce that a large percentage of what they're doing is going to go to streaming. But I do think they drew some very interesting lines, mm -hmm. at least for now about what belongs on the big screen, what belongs on the small screen. And they were pretty consistent throughout the presentation. I know we'll get into it with the shows, but I did think that was one of the, among many interesting takeaways, one of the most interesting things was they really did defend the theatrical experience and they're reserving it for certain types of properties. It, it, it ain't too far, far from what we had uh talked about previously in the show saying that you know there's some move there's some films or content that is going to go to the movies some of these other stuff 
or all uh, some of these other films may go to streaming but the big stuff the stuff that they think yo this is like anything avengers it has to be streaming i mean it has to be uh theaters hopefully the theaters are ready for that um How long do you think, obviously it's obvious because we don't hear the backlash from coming from anywhere, talking about how Disney did this and they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. What, what's, what's the difference between what Disney is doing and Warner Brothers or Warner, or Warner Media? I think you're seeing the difference between when you have the greatest IP in the world and you can just go to that well over and over and over again. Look at the list. Show me on that list how many things that are truly, truly never been done before new. It's not a lot. Yeah. It's we're mining the Marvel catalog. We are mining the Star Wars canon. We are taking the animated library and making it live action. It is, we're rebooting Mighty Ducks, Turner and Hooch, all these things that you know and love from Disney. That's the biggest difference, yeah. is they don't have to venture out and truly, truly create brand new stuff. All the stuff they need is right there. It's, this is what we do well. Why don't we just do more of that really well? Yeah. And that's, I think, the biggest difference yeah. you saw on display is when is when you have that scale you can do stuff like this yeah warner brothers doesn't have the built-in i mean the h Bear library is a good library but they, they don't have the built-in universe university yeah. you just put this out to the world yeah. um and so i think you're you're just seeing that difference in weight class right this is it's welterweight versus heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're seeing. One last question before we move on. Warner, Warner Media. Was it desperation? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You could pick your term for it, but as we discussed, I mean, the the parent company AT and T is in a different place than the Disney parent. And, to, they they use the assets they had mm -hmm. to try to drum up interest in a in a service that you know just go by the numbers. I mean, they had 12 million subscribers. Yeah. That's only a third of the HBO subscriber base, which is about 35, 36 million. Mm -hmm. 12 million is that's not going to keep you in the game yeah. long term in streaming, right? When I mean, Netflix and Disney are playing in the hundreds of millions, yeah. I and mean, they're trying to get to a billion longer term, like that's what you're looking at. Yeah. So if you want to be relevant and you want to be a player and you want people to shell out 15 bucks, and they point out that, you know, HBO Max is twice as much as Disney Plus still. You have to give people a reason to do that. I think they did do that. I think the 18 films give you a, a must see service, especially for people like you and me and the genres that we like. But, you know, they kind of, they kind of emptied the gun. Yeah. You know, if you look at what Disney did, Disney was like, okay, you know, let's 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 power up the arc reactor and we'll fire something really cool. Yeah. But like there's a whole Stark Industries factory working on other stuff behind that. We're not yeah. done. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's a, that's the big difference. Wow. Um let's start off with uh, the 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 IP that uh Kevin introduced. I like the third three and a half hour mark. He talked a lot about it. He, he talked a lot about um, some of the stuff that he's coming out. Although I was disappointed in, 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 in quite a few things that you sort of would have thought you would have seen something. It was, I was very disappointed <laughs> in that. Um, first let's talk, um, WandaVision. We saw a new trailer. Are you any more excited for it than you were previously? 
No, but that's not a fair question, <laughs> considering it's the first thing we've gotten new and different in, in over a year. So yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think it would have been possible, actually. But no, I, I think I think what we saw was a reinforcement of everything we knew. And, you know, January 15th, again, can't get here fast enough. So yeah, yeah, I knew. Yeah. So, yeah, with WandaVision, I, I, I definitely, it looks fantastic. Let me point that out. It, you can see, I'm telling you, you can see the money in these things that they're doing, man. And then they're making it, they're, they're doing a hell of a job um, making it look wonderful. Uh, and I wonder, are they going to be using the same tech uh, or, or setup that uh, Star Wars is using for their stuff? So, yes, the Mandalorian pioneered a way of shooting. I'm not film junkie enough to understand it, but it has something to do with green screen and effects shooting that allows you to create more seamless locations while just being in one spot. So yes, that tech is being used now across many of these series. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Finally, we saw something that, listen, again, you see the money, you see the shots, you see the back and forth between uh, Sebastian and um, Anthony. I was I was I was pretty much um, blown away, especially uh, after seeing that that flight scene from uh, Anthony Anthony Mack from Falcon at towards the end. That was dope. That was dope. Like I was sitting there just watching, just <laughs> just mes mesmerized, and then it just stopped, and, and it's like. They do a hell of a job, man, with with visuals, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes and how this turns out, especially because all we got it was a little piece, right? Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I, we didn't see William Hurt in there, right? We didn't see. I saw Daniel Bruhl a tiny bit. Who? Baron, Z Baron Zemo. Oh, oh yeah, 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 one yeah. shot. I mean, the with the 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 the, the bullets. Yeah, and didn't really see much of though. Wyatt Russell. Didn't really see much of um, Emily Van Camp. So they, so yeah, they 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 they're, they're keeping that on the low till we see it and just giving us the two guys that we already know and seeing how they're going to work together and how they look. It it was exactly what I hoped it would be, which was I immediately had the feel of Winter Soldier. It had that like pacing the two of them make it i mean their chemistry is so good like i said i, I think i call it's the marvel buddy cop series yeah. like it is it is 48 hours it is you know you know it is that type of dynamic a lethal weapon like it is that kind of give and take between the two of them and, and that's what the lifeblood of this show is going to be but yeah. to your point i think they gave you that visual we talked about the visuals they gave you that tease at the end where they were like Oh yeah, no, we're we're putting it down. Like where well, these guys are gonna do some stuff that you know we haven't really even been able to see see them do. So it felt very, very like Winter Soldier, but very true to you know going big and everything that just told us. So yeah, I mean to me it was like, yeah, we, we knew this show was gonna be the most reliable thing on the board, and it just kind of put an exclamation point that there's no way this is bad. It's gonna yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Uh what what's the day for that again? That one, oh yeah, well, we can talk about that. So WandaVision, January, Falcon, Winter Soldier, March, Loki, and May. Okay. But yeah. we're good until the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so for the first time, we got to see Loki. We saw some of the setup for Time Variance Authority. There was there were some shots there, Brian, that I was like, yo, is this who I think it is? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but I'll, I'll let you know. But we saw, I love the way they they showed us the 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 scene that sets that scene, all the rest up. When he when he when he takes the what's it called? The 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 Tesseract. And he goes away. I don't know. We don't know where he ends up. I'm, I'm interested in finding out where he ends up. I don't. I hope it's not something like in the past because I didn't think the Tesseract was for that, 
right? So it'll be interesting to see wh- how, where and how he ends up. And I think it has something to do, uh, some of the plot, he, he has to assist in capturing someone. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's sort of like a time, it's like a time, time chase and like he's sort of either messing with the timeline or restoring it. That's got it, got it. Got it. What did you think of Owen Wilson? I mean, you saw Owen Wilson, but I wasn't too scared of, of, of seeing that performance. Um, that should be interesting, though. He, you can tell he's getting up there in age. Yeah, but he's still Owen Wilson. Yeah. I mean, he was playing Owen Wilson. Yeah. I, mean, I got to be honest, like, of the three, this is still the one I'm most cautious on. I think you're bringing up the right point, which is, the trailer, I think, very deliberately highlighted the TVA. It almost felt like the trailer was more about the TVA than it was about Tom Hiddleston. And quite honestly, like the stuff they showed Tom Hiddleston doing, I didn't find all that exciting. Yeah. It was much more, as you said, the nuggets and the questions that were being yes. dropped along the way. Yeah. They're trying to hook you with that. Whereas I feel like in Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're hooking you with the two leads. Yes, yes, like, yes. You know, yes, come yes, back yes. and hang out with these guys. Yeah, so I think yeah, it was yeah. a very different tone. Yeah. And I, to me, I'm still cautious, but I get what they were trying to do. So was it was it me or is it me or did I see possibly Galactus? Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. Oh, interesting. Tees of Galactus? Yeah. Hmm. We got to watch it. Well, Fantastic Four is on the board now, so... Oh, not, yeah, but... You, in, well, Fantastic Four, I wasn't, like, really, like, you know, okay, we knew this was coming. You know, all we got is, a, like, a new graphic of what probably the four is going to look like. Who knows? But I wasn't really too uh, enthusiastic of the, the announcement. This is just... Com- confirmation so to speak but we knew this was happening because he said it before in the last uh uh, uh was it d23 or, or his last mm-hmm. event like mm-hmm. a year or two or two ago so that that looks like a destroyed planet there's a face in the center of it right kind of a space a face isn't there kind of a face in the center of this planet like a head I don't know. I don't see that. Oh, that's weird. Like a Rorschach. I almost see like a little bit of a head and that's wild. Like it almost looks like there's a face and to me. It's like there's a nose and a head in the center of there. Interesting. I look at it as a, a destroyed planet. I'm, I'm, and then there's another shot here that you see that looks rather interesting. Right there. What's that? What is that? Oh, like the purple? Or you think that's like the silver server? Hey, you never know. You never know. And who's that sitting there? I don't know who's that. Yeah. That looks like a female. Yeah, it does. It almost looks like Black Widow. That's what interests me. The stuff that's happening. Because... From the time we're dealing with time here, so automatically we're already thinking Kang in some way is going to appear. Who knows if that was Kang himself? Who knows, right? So that's what I'm looking forward to the most. I, I'm like you. I'm a little bit over Loki. I like Loki, but not for his own thing, you know? So we'll see what happens with that. Hawkeye. It seems like things have picked up like crazy on this, right? They're 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 moving along. Uh, we saw shots of Kate Bishop. I thought she looks incredible. She she looks like Kate Bishop, right? The purple purple outfit. Yeah. There we go. So we still don't know what the plot is do we know have they announced anything about the plot and what's going to happen or, or what what may happen no i haven't heard nothing official no yeah yeah so that's one of the, that's one of the things about hawkeye if it's not like if you go back to our other show and i and i explained what i would like to see 
from this show. If it's that, I'm interested. Would you be interested if it's something like that? Yeah, I'd be more interested. Yeah, yeah. so I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully uh, wishing for that to be the case. But if it's not, let's see. Let's see what happens. But right now, I'm not too interested in, in, in Hawkeye. Then we got What If. It was your number one. Yeah. Which, listen, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with because you can go, you can do whatever here. And the animation, I'm telling you, it reminds me of of, of the 1960s or, or, or uh, 1970s of uh, uh, Superman, the, the cartoon, that mm -hmm. classic cartoon. The animation looks dope. We got the original actors to play uh, the vo to, to play the voices. Uh, Jeffrey Wright sounding amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's there's nothing not to be excited about with this show. No, this I'm still I'm still max excited. Nothing yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's I think that's gonna be dope. What if it's gonna be dope? Um, in terms of the footage, was there anything that caught your eye or got you excited? No, I mean not not in particular. Like I said, this is complete. This is one of the rare properties where like the sh the slate is totally clear, right? They can yeah. literally do anything they want. So I'm trying not to. I'm just trying to keep an open mind and enjoy it. Um, and so I feel like what I was interested in, like you said, was feel, you know, look, and then yeah. sort of hearing hearing the new voices and the old voices kind of back together. So to me, they they checked every box they needed to, and I think this will be. Once it gets going, I still think this will be one that generates a lot of buzz, especially as we get deeper into it and people realize kind of the different cool, creative ways they're reimagining the universe. Yeah. Then they announced Captain Marvel 2. I, I put it in the same category in terms of, I don't know what this is going to be. I know she'll pro probably have uh, something to do with uh, another show that they announced that it was new that I was excited for. And I'm pretty sure you were excited for it too. It's something that we've been asking for for some time. Well, not even asking, but hoping that it happened. And that's Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, if you don't know, I'm not, I'm not a historian or anything like that, but a lot of people who you think are these people aren't. And it's basically an invasion happening with the scrolls, right? Because they're shapeshifters. We saw that in Captain Marvel, the first film. So I'm interested in seeing how it, are there going to be surprises? Are there going to be like double crosses that you're going to be like, oh, snap, that kind of reaction? I'm pretty sure there will be. And I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll culminate possibly with Captain Marvel 2. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll extend it. I actually think the most, I think the, I think you're onto something. I don't think it's a coincidence that they, you know, we knew a Nick Fury show was coming. I don't think it's a coincidence they chose that avenue given, you know, his, his last big screen real role in the universe was in Captain Marvel 1. And then I'll even tie it into, we got the confirmation that Miss Marvel is in Captain Marvel 2. So I think you got three pieces on the board. You got two shows and you got a film. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they're all going to link up and they're all going to build hype for each other. And, and I think it's also Marvel understanding that Captain Marvel 1 had some work to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is a little bit of a hedge and a safeguard to be like, hey, we're going to build the excitement and kind of get you guys ready yeah. um, and more invested in Captain Marvel 2 before it comes to the to the big screen. Yeah. Uh, and also Monica Rambeau is going to be there. Grown That's up. correct. Uh, so again, you, I guess you could tie one division to, to Captain yeah, Marvel. Exactly. That's a, all about connections. <laughs> all about connections. Uh, I don't know exactly what Gal Gadot got for Wonder Woman 84 prior to the HBO Max pay bump, but I'm yeah. sure it was pretty decent considering she got almost nothing for the first one. Yeah. Um, I mean, hey, maybe maybe after this is done, we might have to have the uh, Wonder Woman versus Captain Marvel for the big bag in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, Captain Marvel 2 is going to make a billion. It's going to make a billion. And it won't be because of Brie Larson. It's because of the storyline with Secret Evasion, if that is the case. So 
that's the way Marvel's gonna continuously make these billion dollar box office hits because they're gonna keep the story is it's not gonna be just one story, it's gonna be a bunch of stories that leads to this. Um Miss Marvel was announced. We got a sneak peek into some of the people behind the scenes. And I'm not gonna say I'm super still, I'm still not super excited over it. I know you probably are. Yeah, um, still, but I'm, yeah. I'm 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 interested in seeing it uh, because this is going to be something fresh and brand new. And for those people who are uh, fans of uh, of of Miss Marvel, I'm sure they can't wait for this. This is probably one. This is probably their number one. What did you think? Yeah, well, I think I think it 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 is a harbinger of something that we clearly know we're getting that wasn't talked about yesterday, which is Young Avengers, right? So I, it clearly is a concerted effort to aim something at younger audiences, whether it's teen audiences, you know, 20 something audiences. And so this is almost feels like the forerunner to that. So I was actually just most excited to see that she would, as I hope, would be linked up with Captain Marvel too. So she's now getting into the big, the big screen arena as well. But I think, yeah, I mean, as we get toward Young Avengers, you're going to see more of these shows where it's like the target audience is people yeah. who are in high school or people who are in college and, and yeah. sort of, but you know, people like us can still enjoy it, but yeah, it's yeah. really meant to connect with yeah. that younger generation. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to be looking, um, to, looking forward to seeing the connections that it may build from Miss Marvel, because we all know she is going to be appearing in Captain Marvel too. So... Yeah, man, it, this is must see TV. He's making it like that, right? If you like all this stuff, you gotta watch this. And he's and he, he has you. He has you. She Hulk. So I want. I gotta say this. I don't understand why she said, or the rumor was that she was, and then she like denied it, and it's her. Oh. It's like yo. Just don't say nothing. <laughs> you know, you don't have to say, oh, no, it's not me, whatever. You don't have to say that. Just don't say nothing. Everybody, to, to we knew this. We knew this, right? It'll, it would have been a surprise if it was someone else. But what caught my attention when he said six foot seven. So to me, I'm like, okay, what is this going to look like? Right, I'm still stuck on that. I did enjoy the fact that uh, Abomination, Tim Roth is gonna reprise his role, so we're gonna probably see, who knows, a round two, right? Uh, with with the with the Hulk, or, or, or is he gonna just like no? It's actually like round four, right? Is it? He, he kicks his ass in the warehouse. He kicks his ass on the field. Then they fight in the, yeah, city, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, streets yeah. of Harlem, right? So this would technically be round four. <laughs> he comes this would be round two as the abomination. Though. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I would say it's getting a little bit more interesting, but yet I, I'm still not convinced as to how well, because, you know, the Hulk is not like a fan favorite to me, for, for me anyway. He's not. Abomination, I'm looking, you know, I want to see how that, what's that going to be about. And I'm, I, I want to see what this 647 She-Hulk is going to look like. No, the most, oh, oh, so for me, by far the most interesting drop from Kevin was about the lawyer comment. Did you catch that? Where he said that basically Jennifer Walters is an attorney and he basically was like, what other like what other legal minds might she run into in a New York courtroom? I mean, that was pointed straight at Daredevil being in the theory. <laughs> that was the most interesting thing yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I didn't hear that. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that. That was the thing that caught my eye. I was like, oh, okay. He clearly wants you to think there's something connected to Daredevil. I, I can't even think of what other attorney he could be talking about in New York. No. Yeah. So that's meaningful. That's meaningful. So Hey, they got me interested. Now, now you making it interesting. I'm still wondering what this is gonna look like. Um, then he announces Ironheart. This is something that people had talked about in the past, but I wasn't really too sure. There wasn't a real a lot of news uh, or, or, or big rumors um, coming out for Ironheart. This wasn't like a so so surprise, but uh, what did you think about that announcement for Ironheart? 
I gotta be honest, I kind of put Ironheart and Armor Wars in the same bucket for me, which is like maybe it's just a function of the the field is so crowded and I've got so many things I'm so excited about that it, it, I'm probably not being fair to these series, but I guess it 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 didn't make the tops of my list for like what I needed to add. Yeah. You know, like if you made me redo my rankings, I think both of those shows would be in the bottom. Half. Bottom, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy with Don Cheeto, man. And I'm happy for the girl that got this part. I mean, that's that's gonna be another, she's gonna be another superstar. Right? Uh, so definitely not on the top of my list, but I, you, obviously we're gonna watch it. And who knows, it may be dope, but if it isn't dope, listen, I if I know something is whack after a couple of, I'm not gonna keep on watching it. I don't care what it is, but I'll watch it once and let hope and maybe I'll watch it again. Um, so we got, we, I think we went through, oh, the movies now, Marvel films. This was the bigger yes. news overall, I thought, top to bottom. Let's start off with Black Panther. Yeah. And he, and, and he said something that sort of like, <laughs> if you've watched the show, You've heard me say plenty of times that uh, they should recast the T'Challa. That Black Panther has a lot of story to be told, and they, who knows, maybe temporarily sure, sure it becomes Black Panther. Who knows? But to kill him off screen, or to maybe, who knows? He's on a mission. I don't know. They, but they have to recast it to child they, 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 they so they're saying did they say we're not reca recasting to child right now or they said they're not recasting oh. well they didn't say forever and nothing very few things are forever i think it seems more clear than I would have expected that T'Challa will not be in Black Panther 2. Mm -hmm. Now, there there are rumors that he is going to be written off as a death off screen. I, they, he didn't say that. Yeah. But it definitely seems like for Black Panther 2, sure he's going to have the mantle, at least, you know, for the, for the bulk of the film, if not the whole film. Um, which I'm a little surprised, I gotta be honest. I mean, given that they're basically shooting this on time and releasing it on time, that's a pretty big story shift. So I'm I'm surprised. Um, I respect the decision. I understand why they're doing it, um, but I'm with you. I, I, I hope that we, I hope that the character lives in some form someday, you know? Um, yeah. I, have, I have big concerns, man, because what if, it's Submariner or Doom. What's that interaction going to be like? Right? Is it going to be a moment of tension? Is it going to look silly? Is it going to sound silly? You know, it, I, I'm just a bit nervous about how this is going to play out and how some like you know, big characters like this, because we've heard the rumors that Doom is going to be there. We've heard the rumors that Submariner is going to be there. What story are they going to tell? If those guys are in it, I got to believe you pose some some sort of threat to Doom, right? I got to believe it. Even though if you're saying, you can say whatever you want, but if I don't, it's like Ralph Macho challenging me to a fight and telling me he's going to tear my head off. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm not going to take that seriously. Is it going to come off that way? It's, that's what I'm concerned. That's what I'm concerned. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. I'm quite certain. I mean, we knew. That, I, I believe we knew. We didn't have a, a title, but we knew that this was coming now. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, we're going to the Quantum Realm again. Who knows if bits and pieces, or egg, or or, or, or what do they call them? Egg. Easter eggs of the Fantastic Four are there, um, or Easter eggs of Kang the Conqueror, right? Um, I would assume so. Um, there have been 
talks about uh, the Fantastic Four being stuck in that. I don't know if you saw it, Brian. In the second film, they, when they fly away, there's some sort of in in oh yes a, a city yeah, yeah. encompassed in some like some, some some sort of bubble. It's supposed to be called Acropolis or something, and that's where Acropolis is the territory of Kang the Conqueror. He runs that. So let's see. I don't know what this is going to be about. Do you know what this is going to be about? No, but I mean, I think that we know that Kang is being introduced and he's got a major role in this movie. I mean, that's really the kind of the only thing that matters. Because I yeah. feel like everything else about this film, I think we feel safe in knowing what we're going to get, right? Whether it's Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Shel Pfeiffer, um, Evangeline Lilly. I guess we're getting an older recast version of Cassie Lang. And I'm assuming that Catherine Newton now is the young Avenger. Like that's who we're going to get for that part. Yeah. So that was a bit of news. Mm -hmm. but, but this is all about Kang, right? Yeah. I mean, I just feel like the Ant-Man world, we know pretty well at this point. So it's just yeah. about elevating that with a bigger a bigger villain and tie-in to something else. Um, let me see. Uh, Doctor Strange, did they mention anything about Doctor Strange too? Not really, no. I mean, I, I think, yeah. I think they just tied in. Say, I think the main thing that I took from Kevin's uh, presentation uh, re concerning Doctor Strange is that it'll tie into both WandaVision and Spider Man mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and the multiverse. We sort of knew that already. So this is not a big reveal. Just like like if, if I hear a headline, Toby, Toby McGuire has signed on. Okay, <laughs> it was just a matter of time. So this news wasn't like earth shattering, but um, we knew this was happening. Similarly to Fantastic Four, we knew this was happening. I think the one thing with, I think the thing I just find interesting is I think it shows, when we talk about both of these, I think it shows you a little bit about who Marvel Kevin Feige, Disney, who do they trust in these next series, right? In the way that Robert Downey was an anchor to the universe. They trusted him. And they could put him anywhere on the board and they knew something good was going to happen. Yeah. The Russo brothers, once they came on board, they trusted them. That's why they got the big assignment. That's why they got Infinity War and Endgame. So I think you are getting a little bit of a clue like Benedict Cumberbatch is somebody they clearly trust to guide multiple characters in multiple shows, which yeah. is why he's on the board. And that I think is interesting. I think the most interesting part of Fantastic Four, when we when we connect it back to Spider-Man 3, John Watts is clearly somebody that Marvel thinks is a superstar director to give him everything we're getting in Spider-Man 3 to play with. And now to give him Fantastic Four, a film franchise which has struggled oh, on yeah. screen twice, yep. a big responsibility, I think it tells you a lot about the faith that Kevin and the studio have in his skills to kind of you know, bring those frames. So that I think is the most interesting thing. You're just kind of seeing, in, now that we don't have Chris Evans and Downey yeah. and some of these other guys, who are they, who are they putting in lead positions to connect us with. And yeah. that's, it. that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, th those are the things that Kevin Feige announced. Um, the movies, did I list the movies? Yes, I did. I missed one. That's what you, yeah, we just spoke about the movies, but we missed one. I, I was, we missed a couple actually. Two that he announced, two that I expected to have a trailer for I expected to see something these two films are done the Batman ain't done and we got something Shang-Chi Shang when he when he when when, I, when he showed it I was like oh snap I was getting ready I was getting hyped and then nothing then Eternals, I thought for sure we're gonna see something. Nothing. 
Why do you think that was the case? So if I had to guess, it's because of Disney Plus, the international version of Disney Plus is not a lot live yet. That's my number one guess, is I think they're waiting until some of the other countries and regions they talked about the services live. I think they might they might use it as a you know a promotional tool for that. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think those two movies are coming out in streaming though? No, I didn't mean. I, I just meant as sort of a like almost like a cross promotional thing. It's sort of like this is a property that has a huge global appeal and like oh by the way like we now have available mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the studio service that is bringing you this to the big screen. Is, yeah. you know, I think there's something there that they're they're waiting on. I you know I also think the other thing is you know we didn't talk about is Disney clearly views the MCU films as sacred to movie theaters yeah. still yeah so yeah. the rumors about black widow didn't happen yeah yeah all of these none of these properties there were other movie properties that were shifted to streaming where they announced for streaming nothing in the marvel universe was touched yeah. that tells you something yeah so i think the other reason you didn't get the trailer is because they still don't have a certain timeline for getting these out mm -hmm. and they don't you know now i'm with you i think you could show footage and just say coming soon yeah. you don't have to put a date on it yeah. but you know they may have other reasons other dates in mind you know obviously the you know super bowl is not far away like there's other venues where maybe I they guess. feel like that's where they want to drop so okay but i mean we do have a date for shang chi we do have dates for the eternals at the moment but i think what they're acknowledging is the uncertainty around the theater business it, for 2021 i think that's part of it got it so yeah, there you have it. I mean, a lot was announced. Um, a couple of things you thought you'd see, you didn't see. Uh, a few surprising uh, shows that were announced. Um, some were like Secret Invasion. That's huge. But the other ones, Ironheart, Armor Wars, they were like, yeah. You know, I was like, hooray for Don Cheadle. He got a show, you know, we get to see some Don Cheadle. This Ironheart um, um, character. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, um, I'm not mad at it, but it's not like it, I'm, I'm super excited for it anyway. Um, the new, the no recast really, really, I was like thinking about it. I was in bed like, you know, I was, I was thinking about it. Um, I would love to have been in the room for the discussion oh yeah. around oh yeah. that. Oh yeah. I would, I, yeah, I would want to hear the discussion for and the the one against and and how did they arrive at that decision that's a question i'd probably ask if i ever had a chance to ask kevin feige or brian kugler like how did you start that conversation because i know you guys didn't just call each other up who we gonna replace no you was thinking about you know you know the um Ch chadwick but I, at some point, the phone got picked up and, and, and people were called and you guys had a chat. I wonder how that started off. And, and then ultimately how they end up to this decision because it, to me, it just doesn't, I understand, but it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. So yeah, um, a lot to look forward to forward to with uh, MCU t uh, content so um, yeah uh, but now they gave it to us early too they gave it to us early meaning they, this was like in the first hour right they so talk about Star Wars I know they put Kevin Feige and Marvel last yes and that's deservedly so given the performance over the past 10 to 15 years Mm -hmm. I actually thought the Star Wars section was more interesting. Yes, 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 yes. A lot of things to discuss about this. A lot of things to, a lot of things that I picked up on uh, and what they are attempting to do. So the shows for Disney Plus that they announced, uh, let's start off with Rangers of the New Republic. Well, can we start with an overarching thought? Okay. 
Star Wars is a TV enterprise. We talked about, you and I have talked about this in the yes. past. If you rewind the clock to when the new, the latest Skywalker trilogy was coming out and look at what they were doing, right? It was the trilogy, Rogue One, Solo, Ryan Johnson, trilogy of movies, Benioff and Weiss, trilogy of movies. Mm -hmm. What did you get yesterday? You got how many TV shows and how many movies? Star Wars is a television streaming enterprise. That's the number one thing I took from this is they went back in the room after some of the failures mm -hmm. of Rise of Skywalker, relative failures of Solo and Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, our future is with what the Mandalorian did. It is not on the big screen. That's the number one thing I took from this. Group. And that's a huge change from, from what we've had over the last 50 years. What I got from this is that and I think he mentioned it when he was doing the when she was doing the presentation is that Ashoka and some of these other uh, uh, stories are at some point going to come together for a, a, a crossover event of some, of some, at some point this reminded me of what Netflix did with The Defenders mm -hmm. The last one didn't work. The Defenders didn't work. But this definitely can work. Yes. Because of the people you have behind it and really thinking about what it is that they're going to put out there. So far, what Mandalorian has done so far is just wowed every week. And that's how you hear people talking about. They saved Star Wars. Wars. Huh? They saved Star Wars. Oh, yeah. They definitely. That's what they Absolutely. did. Absolutely. Absolutely. They saved Star Wars. Yep. They absolutely did. And what I think excites me the most, and a good analogy would be the success of Avatar. It wasn't necessarily the story because the story was a remake of Pocahontas, right? We, we all know that. But it was the exploration, the, the, the escape that sort of enticed you and you were glued not not just visually but understanding how that stuff worked with star wars there's just so many places so many places to go so many things to see so many characters to know so far a lot of them, not, i'm not gonna say all the characters are great but for the most part a lot of them are great in just the Mandalorian alone. So they're expanding this world of Star Wars, of Star Wars on, on, on this on a small screen. And I think it, it, I think it's gonna be, listen, a hell of a year or a few years of watching these shows play out. I think so so much well for as a side note, um, when does when does the John Favreau monument get built? <laughs> Disney headquarters, right? I mean, Iron Man and Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, you guys literally launched or saved two most important pieces of IP. Uh, <laughs> John, Favreau, John Favreau starts franchises. Oh, and by the way, he also didn't he also direct like Jungle Book and Lion King and the sort of live action remakes of the animated. So if you want to give him credit for three different, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah whatever. The, the guy's throwing a hundred miles an hour every time he come comes out of the bullpen. But yeah, yeah, I think the thing that's to your point is really interesting to see is there's an opportunity here to really go for different tone and different feel because they're finally taking you away from Skywalker verse and kind of going into canon yeah. places that the Clone Wars went, places Rebels went, places the video game went very successfully. Yes, yes. And, we'll, and, and if you're willing to kind of do what Mandalorian did, which is like, it's the heart of Star Wars, but done in a different genre. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. Now I think you're on to something. Now I think, you know, maybe there's a detective in here. Maybe there's, you know, a, a political thriller, which I think one of these is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I think there's real opportunity there for a reinvention where you're really excited because it's like, oh, I'm, 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 these are genres I've seen done well in TV before, but I can do it with lightsabers and I get yeah. to do it with, you know, planets and creatures that are, are very you know, critical to the Star Wars fan, fan base. So, you know, I thought this was a, a home run, at least in terms of idea. Yeah, they came back. So, in Rage of the New Republic, are going to be um, what's the um, who's gonna so this is this is Cara Dune, I'm assuming. And okay, Carl Weathers and Gina Carano, I'm assuming, are the headliners of this series. They didn't say that, but that's I'm guessing that's what she's a ranger of the New Republic, right? That's yeah, true, true, Marshal of the New Republic. That's I'm assuming true. what this is. True. Yeah, I hope I see more Carl Weathers. I like Carl Weathers, man. A Shoka series. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing those lightsabers and her fight and her quest to get General Thong. Right? That's what that's what she's after. That's what she wants to. And I'm pretty sure all that stuff is gonna at some point all collide into one show involving a whole bunch of them when it gets when it gets to that point. So it it also makes me wonder like is Bo Katan gonna be in this series more than she is in, in Mandalorian? Like I don't know. I will say and I'm going to I thought jump Bo-Katan in. was going to be in Rangers of the New New Republic. But to say, I, I, some of these characters that have been introduced, it's like where they're going to spin off and slot yeah. in is going to be interesting. So Ahsoka, there's only one decision they made that I have major questions about, mm-hmm. and I'm scared of, which is, and I got to say it now, I think Vader's in the wrong series for Obi Wan Kenobi. To me, the more interesting storylines and history is if he was in the Ahsoka series because Ahsoka Tano is Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. If you're going to bring Hayden Christensen back, as a force, how is his character not in the Ahsoka series? But as a Force ghost? No. The canon is Ahsoka trained under Anakin Skywalker. I, I, I get and it. then in Clone Wars, she fights him as Darth Vader several times. But I, where does, in terms of timeline, where does this take place? I don't know. I'm just saying, like, the, the, I, to me, the, the, the heart and soul or some of the greatest conflicts in that series are her having that heritage of, I'm not really a Jedi. I trained under the guy who became Darth Vader. I then had to fight him several times and I lived to tell about it. Uh I was, I have questions, I will get to it. I have questions about, you know, Hayden Christensen in the Kenobi series, but I was really disappointed when they said he was coming back and that he wasn't announced as part of this series. So that's one of my, if I had a complaint, it's my number one complaint is that no Vader, no Anakin in Ahsoka, at least, at least what they announced. My whole thing about that is, is the and what, in terms of the timeline, where is this taking place? Because Mandalorian takes place after the fall. Vader's dead. You're right. Right? So You're right. I don't know if they're going back to that timeline when Vader's alive and, and she's uh, training under. No, him. you're right. No, you're fair. It's a fair point. So, but... so let's see. But I, I was still excited to say, yo, Vader lives. Vader lives. I'm Look, looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> I do wonder how they're going to pull this off in the show because so th- they did confirm it's 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Okay. So Obi-Wan ostensibly is kind of in hiding, but still doing stuff. Yeah. Vader is Vader. So this is not Hayden Christensen as Anakin. This is Vader. But if we believe Star Wars A New Hope, they never crossed paths again until they met on the Death Star. True. So how does this show keep well, them yeah. apart the entire time? Yeah. And have Vader not know where he is? That's the only question I have. Is like, pro- it, I mean, is it a good? Is it possible that Ashoka fights him in 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 that era? Well, okay. So now, well, if there if there's these crossovers they're waiting to tease us with, okay, that's a that's a whole different you know level of of interest but i just when i heard it i was kind of like oh that's exciting but then i started to think about the story and i said this is going to be tricky yeah, to really yeah. Pull it, off. It, it is an interesting uh 
dilemma uh, on how they they they're gonna pull that off. Because I, I when I think back, the I, there's a part in the New Hope where where Darth Vader says, "I haven't felt this presence since I don't know how long, but it's been a minute. It seems a long time, exactly." So uh, let's see how they pull that off. But I'm excited to see Vader and how they're going to pull off the ruthlessness that he was and the no BS type individual that he was. It's like, you fail me, you die. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one. And, and he was powerful. He was he was the guy. So you want to see that on, on, on screen. Uh, Lando was announced. And this is something that's been rumored for quite some time, if I'm not mistaken. And Donald Glover, has, I didn't say it was him, but I'm assuming it's him um, who has said he wants to play this character again. I would be upset if this is Harlem in, 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 in Star Wars. <laughs> don't do that. Don't make it a, a hey, you know, don't, <laughs> don't, you know, Let's make it Star Wars. Let, let it be Star Wars. I just hope they keep the Star Wars edge and not trying to make something. I mean, because some of these characters, they do talk like people where we would probably talk to, right? But I don't know. It's just a certain way they 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 talk that that because he was dope in, in in Solo. He was good. Mm -hmm. um, 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 what's his name? Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Yeah. Yep. So. Let's see what this Lando is going to be about. Um, the High Republic. This is set how many years before Skywalker's? It's well, High Republic is like way back. That's like height of the Republic. That's like height of the sort of pre-Empire. Um, so my like, I had a wish list for this would be it's basically House of Cards in the Star Wars universe. Got it. That's kind of like if I had to simplify it. it now I did say it's very female centric, but it seems to lend itself to a political mm -hmm. you know, oriented type of show, which I think is interesting. So yeah. And, and the showrunner, like I said, did Russian dolls. So that's actually also interesting. Like it's a quality, okay. quality announcement. Okay. Uh yeah, I mean I'm it could listen visually it could look dope because some of the high republic stuff that i've seen mm -hmm. visually it looks amazing right even in cartoons so to bring it to life that's gonna be, that's gonna be something to watch uh who knows it, it turns into some sort of like game of thrones type situation right it, 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 they can go anywhere with this and, and and it's gonna look amazing some of the animation the bad batch look pretty dope well, but the animated universe has been in good shape for a while. This is actually a strength of Star Wars, like Clone yeah. Wars, Rebels. Like, they know what they're doing when it comes yeah. to animated shows. I mean, I think the one, they're bringing back what, one of them brings back 3PO and R2. But I mean, I think, like, the idea of Star Wars animation, like, fans, I think, feel very comfortable that these will be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Um, they're doing, like, a kid show, right? Uh, with R2 and... Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, 3P... 3DPO or 3PO, C3PO, yeah. C3PO, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in seeing Visions and, and uh, the the Visions anthology. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's sort of some just different interpretations of the Star Wars universe, right? Drawn by different uh, people who I guess get inspiration from Star Wars and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. So if I go back to genre for a second, just if I had to guess, we don't know anything yet about these shows, but just the titles and who we think's involved. So I mentioned like High Republic seems like a political thriller, maybe. You've got a couple of, let's call it like rogue, you have like a rogue show kind of in, in Lando, right? Sort of like a guy who plays both sides. That's sort of a, yeah, yeah. a well-known TV type trope. You have kind of basically what I think is a couple of almost like samurai type series with Ahsoka and Obi-Wan. Yes, yes, yes. You kind of have a military one with the we didn't talk about the Cash and Andor series. Yes, which yes. Is, which is in production, right but like now, that's yeah. a you know given what we saw in Rogue One. That's is that gonna be great. like a spy thing? Like spy slash war like military. That's what that feels like to me. Like secret agent military, like gritty. And then quite honestly, like without knowing any better, Rangers of the New Republic sounds to me like a Star Wars cop show. That 
kind of like if she's a marshal of the new republic and carl weathers is helping it's almost like she's a you know that's a little bit what that feels like so that's what i mean by they, they have chances i think to really go into really fun genres just using the star wars universe and star wars characters anyway that's just best guess just looking at what they announced so. yeah um so this is set and or set obviously before world one because he he he, yeah. you know, he dies uh how many years before do you know did they say i don't know if we i don't know if we said but yeah so i, I mean that one i'm not crazy excited about um uh, I, I i just don't know enough about it to but he was dope in rogue one so yeah. and he's a and he's a great actor he's a yep. great actor he, he's been in uh narcos. In show narcos yeah he was he was dope he was dope he was dope um did we miss anything from uh star wars shows uh, uh, we haven't gotten into the movies just yet. Oh, well, Mandalorian season three confirmed for next December. Of course. I mean, the mainstay. Yeah, of course. You got to do Mando, man. <laughs> but, uh, this is going to make so much money off of Mando. It's not even funny, yo. The stuff that's going to, the toys that are going to come out of that show. Um, Rogue Squadron. Is going to be directed by Patty Jenkins. I don't know too much about this. What do you know about this? So I actually thought this was one of those. Why didn't we think of this years ago? Because so I don't know exactly what story they're going to, you know, derive for this. But the idea of I mean, one of the most successful things that Lucasfilm or Lucas Arts has done is the old series of video games kind of x-wing tie fighter like they were some of the best flying kind of space fighting games dog yeah. fighting games that were ever made you know for their time and to me like this is an opportunity to basically do that on a big screen yeah. so if you're going to basically make almost like a i mean i don't want to use top guns not the right analogy it really is more like aerial combat but just yeah in space yeah. i mean take my money and patty jenkins directing it is you know i think we know we're in pretty good hands from a blockbuster standpoint. and she gonna have money this time <laughs> <laughs> and she's not gonna have i don't think she's gonna i don't you know all due respect to marvel i don't think she's gonna have them in her hair about how she wants to Do make it. this movie so um, I thought this was actually a pretty exciting announcement, and I think it's interesting that they really kind of saved this for the theater. That yeah. it did not make this a series; they actually they made this a movie. I'm actually really excited. I think it's a movie that would be great on the big screen. If it's a lot of great X-wing versus Tie fighter, Rebel versus Imperial space fighting, I still think the end of New Hope, the fight against the Death Star, is still as good as anything yeah. Star Wars has produced. Yeah, yeah. Um, then they announced the project that uh, Taika Waititi is directing. Um, they didn't name the project, they didn't give us a release date. They're just saying that he's doing one. It was kind of weird, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like we've known he was doing one for a while. They didn't even give you anything new. I think it was almost like a more, in a weird way, I felt like it was an announcement meant to kind of let you know that the like Ryan Johnson trilogy is not happening because yeah. it's like they didn't announce anything about that but they let you know this one is happening so it's almost like they knew the rumor mill and they're like all right let's just clear clarify for you guys what movies are actually on the board there's only two yeah 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 so who knows i'm gonna ask you this one question i think before we wrap up because we we went through everything right there's anything uh anything else that we have to talk to right Oh man, I don't know. Yeah, I, I hope. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, obviously, Disney as a whole had a lot of other content in other other areas. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It was insane. But. You know what I found um, uh, interesting outside of the Disney uh, Plus um, uh, shows and 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 movies and things of that nature. Um, I don't think we. I think we talked about it previously, but just for confirmation. I don't think Charlie Cox has been Charlie Cox has been confirmed as of yet. No, but we're pretty certain that he's he he's locked in. I mean, suppose seemingly in multiple places. Exactly. Kevin is not going to drive himself crazy, man. He's not going to drive himself crazy finding somebody else. God forbid he fails. Everybody's going to be asking Kevin like, "Yo, why did you do it?" 
You think he wants to answer questions on why he chose someone else when the guy is very capable of continuing the the the, the character, a character that everyone loved him in? It doesn't make any sense to go to do anything else. So it's just a matter of time before we get a confirmation. The closer I get, I, I think uh, Spider Man gets done to completion. He may, you know, we may get some set leaks. Who knows? But um, that's happening. That's happening. Whether it happens, whether it happens for anyone else, that's yet to come. But I hope Vincent and and the Punisher, uh, John Bernthal, gets get get those roles back. But I wanted to ask you one question. What do you think happens with those trilogies? The last trilogies that we got. Do we get, do, do you think we get a do-over? Do you think we stay in the past for some time? Or do you think we'll move forward with a new set of trilogy, a new set of circumstances with the Jedi? Because I think the Mandalorian, a lot of this stuff is going to set up um, the possible movies for, uh, for, for the inclusion of the Jedi. I think the bar is pretty high for them to go back to the Star to the Skywalker family saga again. It, it, you're talking about you're talking about remaking Force Awakens through Last Skywalker, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I'm talking about yeah, the like using using Lucas's template basically, which would be the the alternative. Possibly and reca recasting and doing the I, thing. I think that's a long way off. I, I think, if at all, like I said, I think yesterday the message really was, you know, we have discovered a new way to channel Star Wars and it's through streaming and it's through television and it's through series, limited series. It's not through mm -hmm. trilogies of movies. Like I thought it was also interesting that, you know, I mean, Rogue Squadron is the kind of thing that you could probably do multiple movies of, but they didn't announce it as that. Yeah. Remember when they when they hired Ryan Johnson, it was he is going to make a trilogy of Star Wars movies. Benny Off and White were going to make a trilogy of Star. They, they're not pre-committing to any of that anymore. Yeah. So I, I hope not. I hope you know. I think you and I, they need to get away from the shackles, and I call them shackles because as as great a legacy as it is, it, it, it was clear by the end of Rise of Skywalker, it had become a constraint. Like they felt like they were trying to service all these things to fans who had grown up with these movies. They need to find new ground. So I really hope that what we got yesterday is, is an indication that they're finally willing to kind of explore that new ground. But I, I just feel that the people that had their hand, that had the opportunity to do a trilogy didn't quite understand or didn't really know how to tell the story for me the possibilities of a do-over are not quite happening now i think it may happen later if more and more people talk about that possibility i think if you would ask Quite a few people if would you mind a do over that's a question for you guys would you mind a do over of the of the trilogy would you mind them them probably po uh possibly adapting um george lucas's uh vision and, and then perhaps moving forward from that because i want to see what happens after that or um because you, you get people drawing um, um, Sebastian Stan as Luke Skywalker. Obviously, in the past, as a younger um, Luke Skywalker, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that, right? It's still We're still in the past, but in terms of moving forward, you know, I, I think you got to get past that. Obviously, listen, they have a bunch of shows that can go on, and we don't have to even reach that. But... And, and it reminds me, like, Luke Skywalker is still around, right, during The Mandalorian? 
I mean, for all we know, he could be the Jedi who answers that beacon that Grogu sends up on the planet. We don't, I mean, we assume it's, he's not the, he would not be the odds on favorite. I yeah. think Ezra, Ezra Bridges, I think his name would be the yeah. favorite, but like, yeah. technically it's possible. I mean, Luke is out there. Yeah, yeah. Leia is out there. Yeah. I, I'll just point out to you, you on this discussion, time heals all wounds. You know, we, we sit here and fans and audience, we're celebrating the return of Hayden Christensen as Vader. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Hayden Christensen as Vader 17, 18 years ago was viewed as one of the weakest points of that trilogy, of the prequels. Although he was dope in the third one. But I think had an announcement like that been made in 2006, the response would have been negative. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see 15 years later, people are incredibly excited to see him get another crack at a role that he was critically not acclaimed for. Oh, yeah. So that tells you everything you need to know about how time changes our perceptions of, of performance and about actors and about characters. So yeah, I mean, anything is possible, but I do think the bar is really high. And I think what, yes, what this investor did showed you was finally they got in the room and they said, the issue is not Star Wars itself. The issue is the approach we can take to yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. So. Listen, man, there's a lot to look forward to, man. I, I, I'll say that. There's a lot to look forward to. Um, and they only raised the price by a dollar for all yeah, this, yeah, by the know. way. That's a pretty good deal, I think. Yeah, it's still a good <laughs> deal. They could have raised it $2 more, and I'll be fine with it. <laughs> and they will at some point. Uh, because they're going to be offering a lot. And these things, you know, if they want to go crazy, they're going to have to raise the prices, yo. Because it's not like you're not going to pay. Yeah. Right? Especially if they're offering all of this Come on, that doesn't make any sense. Unless you don't like their stuff and and you want to act, be all against it. You're not a fan, whatever. I mean, that's. But the content is ridiculous. If you're an MCU fan, you're, you're getting, uh, you're getting a subscription. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're getting a subscription. If you're a fan of National Geographic, all that stuff that they got. If you're a fan, you're getting it. You're getting it. And now they're giving you new content each of those channels on a regular basis. I mean, you just look at next year, even with the pandemic, we've got a new show in January, new show in March, new show in May. If theaters are back open, we've got three films in the back half of the year. Yeah. Mandalorian caps us off at the end of the year. We roll into 2022. I mean, goodness, <laughs> how much simultaneous theatrical and you know streaming content are we going to have just from one service? Yeah, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. Let us know in the comment section below about what you thought about the Disney Investor Day and what Kevin uh, presented. Um, I'm sure you guys are excited for a lot of the titles that he he presented. I wasn't. I'm excited for Shang Chi. I'm excited for the Eternals, but I was upset that he didn't show anything. Um, tell us what you think about Black Panther two. Should have he should they recast? Obviously, they're not doing it now. So, what kind of story are we gonna get? Let us know. In the comment section below. Um, Star Wars, a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff, man. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Obi-Wan and Ashoka. Uh, I did hear about Andor, but the rest of the stuff I did not uh, expect it. And, and I'm and I'm quite excited for it. I'm pretty sure you guys are too. Which shows are you guys looking forward to? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh Brian, any last words? I think Disney had the last word. So now yeah. it's, you know, you know, I think about our show though, now that, that now the really fun thing is we're two weeks away from pivoting into our reaction to new content. Yeah. I mean, right now we have the Mandalorian obviously, but Wonder Woman 84 and WandaVision are, are a month away. They're yeah. two weeks and a month away. Yeah. That's awesome. That's be, I'm that's really good. excited for that. Yes, 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 me too, me too. Uh, thank you for joining us once again on the Nerd Gen Report. Um, hopefully you guys have some understanding about what's going on with some of these titles where we think, um, uh, what we think about these shows. 
Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Um, and just keep following us every week, man. Hit that like, like and subscribe, that notification bell, and share it with your friends. And join us in the discussion because there's there's a lot, there's always a lot to talk about. We could talk about this stuff for hours. But let's keep it going in the comment section. Um, on behalf of me and Brian, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.